This is the Lifetime Backlog, where I rank and review every game I have ever played. And recently, I've been playing Prey 2017 from Arcane and published by Bethesda. Ah, Bethesda, history's blandest monster. Funny thing, in my original box copy of Skyrim, there's an advertisement for Prey 2. If you haven't seen the one and only trailer for Prey 2, you owe it to yourself to check it out. It has the absolutely killer premise of alien bounty hunting. It could have been like an actual good version of Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Unfortunately, we never got a Prey 2, and Arcane Austin were put in charge of the not a remake of the first Prey. Do you want to know what's on the back of this ad? Yep, Dishonored from Arcane Lions with support from Arcane Austin. It all comes full circle. I played Dishonored at release. In fact, I played it so much, I was pulling pacifist glitchless speedruns. None of those were recorded, so they don't count. You may be asking yourself at this point, what does this have to do with Prey 2017? Well, that Prey 2 trailer at least presented the idea of something original. Prey 2017, on the other hand, plays very similarly to Dishonored as yet another immersive sim. As much as I enjoyed Dishonored and its sequel Dishonored 2, I found myself keeping them both at arm's length, never really calling them great games. I couldn't pin down the reason why until it finally occurred to me while playing Prey 2017. Uh, Arcane come off like a bunch of snobs. Almost all of their games try to recreate the golden age of PC gaming. As if to say, of course we're developing games based on the best. Anything else would be beneath us. And I know what you're going to say. Something along the lines of, well, that's the point. Thief and System Shock were great games, and hardly anyone else are making immersive sims. Why not just let them make their own bland versions? Better than nothing. Fine, far be it for me to tell you what to play and enjoy. For me, though, there's a cynical undercurrent that's hard to ignore. At least with those past titles, it was tech nerds trying to push the possibilities and building design philosophies that would become standards in the future. These games that Arcane pumps out feel like manufacturing nostalgia appeal. Oh, by the way, did you know that Arcane's creative director is Harvey Smith, who also worked on some of those Golden Age PC games like Deus Ex? Well, I feel like that proves my point. Arcane make games like Disney uses Star Wars, not creates, uses. Multi-million dollar productions with in-your-face references to the good old days, and involving anyone from the original Enterprise, including any talent that will still answer their calls. Arcane aren't the only ones that you could blame for such tactics, but I felt the need to communicate that this is a type of arrogance. I mean, ask yourself, is Arcane really as good as you think they are? <coughs> but enough dissecting the developer. What about Prey 2017 itself? Well, it's essentially System Shock 2 again, but with a hefty dash of Dishonored. <laughs> Stop me if you heard this one before. You're trapped on a space station with monsters beyond human comfort. <laughs> Ugh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, you're in search of a way out. That's the System Shock 2 connection. But with moral decisions that put the lives of every sane person on the... Uh, <laughs> sorry, something about reading this is just making me very drowsy. Uh, well, that's the Dishonored part. God, what is this, like the fifth or sixth time someone's tried to recreate System Shock 2? Listen, Western games industry, you need to stop it with the will they won't they, and just pop the question already. I mean, you're not getting any younger. I want to see my grandchildren before I go. As far as gameplay goes, there's the usual trappings of the immersive sim genre, a hybrid of RPG and FPS, uh, might as well throw some more letters in here, multiple solutions to each obstacle, and of course, the living classic itself, climbing around in person-sized air ducts. That's right, we're pulling a diehard. I was pleasantly surprised by some aspects, like the breakaway glass making for alternate routes. I like the zero-g jetpacking in open space. The maneuverability is solid, and it makes for a scenic shortcut to the major sections of the station. The super-sized hot glue gun was pretty cool. It can slow down enemies, but even better, it can be used to make platforms for unconventional pathing through levels. 
Speaking of the enemies, I wasn't terribly impressed with them. Most of them are variations on Black Sludge. You know those kids movies where the villain is made of Black Sludge? Toxic love. It's like that, but you're supposed to take it seriously. Ah, crap. I'm bagging on the game again. I better think of some more positives. Uh, there's a side story where some of the characters are running a D&D &D campaign. A real hashtag relatable moment. Though, with a space station full of doctors and scientists, rules lawyering has to be a huge problem. Black Sludge has plus five resistance to lightning. Ah, crap. I'm getting distracted again. Alright, I'll be honest. By the end of Prey 2017, I was rather disinterested. It seems like something I would like. It's an immersive sim, it's in a space setting with large explorable environments, so why isn't this clicking for me? Well, I think it all comes back to, as it always does, Bethesda. I have this running theory I like to call the Bethesda Blandness Multiplying Factor. You see, any game made by or published by Bethesda will start with at least some blandness. If it's an interesting game with well-realized mechanics, it will have very little blandness. Thus, when applying the blandness multiplying factor, Bethesda's presence will amplify that by only a small amount, keeping the interesting parts at the forefront. But, if a game has a moderate amount of blandness, Bethesda will multiply that exponentially, making it even more bland. Now, if I've lost you at this point, TLDR, it's all Bethesda's fault. I mean, I saw all of y'all while you were trash at Fallout 76, and I was sitting here thinking, where were all y'all earlier? You overnight activist. <clears throat> Fine. Let's wrap this up by finally ranking Prey 2017 in the average tier. Right above Fallout 4, but right below... Oh god, I'm gonna get murdered for this. <sighs> Doom 2016. Hey, I gave y'all the heads up that I think Bethesda blandifies everything they touch, and you can make of that what you will. Hello everyone, this is Odie Knight, and I want to thank you if you watched to the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Despite this video's short length, it actually took a whole lot of work, so uh, please share this around and give it a like if you want. I want to produce more videos like this in the future, so if you want to see more of this, please subscribe and stick around. Right, well, that's the end, and I hope you enjoy the next video, whichever one that may be. Thank you.